Okay, everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Survivor Series War Games Review. Survivor Series War Games was from the Rogers Arena in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And the show just ended. And this year's Survivor Series War Games, I thought it was a decent show, in my opinion. Yeah, the crowd uh, in the first uh, two matches... They were in a coma. They weren't making any noise. Which I'm like, oh, this is not off to a good start for the show. But then, as we got to uh, Braun Breaker versus Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser in that triple threat match, they started to wake up a little bit. But we had the women's war games match, where it was Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Naomi, Io Sky, and Bayley. They ended up taking on Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Tiffany Stratton, Nia Jackson, Candice Ray. And we also had the United States Championship on the line where Ellie Knight defended the title against Shinsuke Nakamura. The Intercontinental Championship was on the line in a triple threat match. Braun Breaker defended the title against Sheamus and Ludwig Kaiser. The World Heavyweight Championship was on the line where... Gunther defend the title against Damian Priest. This was a rematch from SummerSlam. Damian Priest again, another shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. And in the main event, of course, the main event was the men's War Games match, where it was uh, the new bloodline. You had Solsikoa and Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, Jacob Fatu, and Bronson Reed. And they have taken on uh, Roman Reigns, The Usos, uh, Sami Zayn, and CM Punk. But overall, Survivor Series War Games this year, decent show it was. It wasn't uh, great by any means, though, but it was enjoyable. But before I get into the review... If you guys haven't seen my previous video that I uploaded earlier today, I did a movie review of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Jim Carrey's uh, The Grinch. So if you guys haven't seen that video, uh, definitely uh, go check it out. But I haven't watched that film in over 20 years since I was a kid, and I rewatched it earlier today in uh, the theater at my local Alamo Draft House, and I enjoyed the film. Though it was fun. And, you know, when I saw it as a kid, I enjoyed it as well. So, the film still holds up. So, if you want uh, to see a more in-depth review uh, from me, check out the review. But anyway, let's jump right into the review. Survivor Series War Games opened up tonight. With the women's war games match. And my god. This was absolutely awful. This was one of the worst women's war games I have seen. And right from the get-go, as the match got on the way, the crowd did not even give a shit. They were just in a coma. Silent. It's it was like watching a Dynamite, which we all know when we watch Dynamite every Wednesday, how the crowd is in a coma, you know, in points of the show. So it was Bianca Belair, Naomi, EO Sky, Bailey, and Rhea Ripley. They have taken on Nia Jax, Cancer Ray, Tiffy Stratton, Liv Morgan, and Raquel Rodriguez. So Bailey was the first to start off the match. This was Bailey's third War Games match. And Nia Jax uh, ended up uh, starting off also with Bailey. So this was uh, Nia Jax's first uh, War Games match. And of course, we had Nia Jax and Bailey end up going at it here. The other competitors were locked up. In, of course, separate cages. So the bell ended up bringing the match. Technically, didn't officially start because, of course, we know how the War Games uh, match goes. 
each competitor uh, on the separate teams have to get into the ring. And once the final competitor uh, enters, the match officially begins. So Nia Jax took Bailey down and she started taunting the crowd, to which Nia Jax was absolutely awful in this match. I don't know what it was, but she was just not good here. And the match was full of botches. And there was a lot of them, too. So Bailey up avoiding some strikes from Nia Jax. She pushed Nia Jax to the ropes. She ended up uh, sending Bailey into the ropes. Bailey ended up ducking a clothesline from Nia Jax. And Bailey ended up forearming Nia Jax in the face. Bailey ended up charging at Nia Jax, but Nia Jax scooped Bailey up. Bailey slid off of Nia and booted her back. Nia Jax then grabbed Bailey by her throat. Bailey then ended up hooking a side headlock on Nia Jax. Jax ended up pushing Bailey off, and she ended up headbutting Bailey into the corner. Nia Jax then charged. Bailey then slipped between uh, the two rings. Nia Jax followed Bailey out, but Bailey ended up going back into. Uh, the first ring, and she snapped Nia Jax off the middle rope. Nia Jax was down in the middle of the rings. Bailey ended up going to the middle of the rings and charged at Nia Jax, but Nia Jax dropped Bailey into the second ring. Later on, we had Bailey end up chopping away at Nia Jax's chest. She twisted Nia's arm. She then climbed up the ropes and she delivered a her karana to Nia Jax. So Bailey then pulled off a piece of her wardrobe and she whipped Nia Jax with it. Nia Jax ended up blocking it and she had taken Bailey down and she had slapping uh, Bailey's back with the piece of, you know, Bailey's wardrobe. So Nia Jax threw Bailey onto the metal platform that is in between the two rings and Nia Jax she ended up rubbing Bailey's wardrobe with her rear end. And I'm like, did we really need to see that? And she ended up hitting a running knee to Bailey's face. So Bailey ended up sending Nia Jax headfirst into the wall of the cage. And she ended up hitting a running knee to Nia Jax. So Nia Jax sent Bailey into the cage wall. And she ended up delivering a running hip attack into the cage wall to Bailey. So then Naomi ended up coming into the match. And this was her first War Games match. And by the way, happy birthday to Naomi. She ended up wearing a uh, you know birthday hat, as you could tell. And the crowd was, you know, cheering happy birthday to her. So Naomi, she went under the ring, and she retrieved a toilet seat. Yes, a toilet seat was used as a weapon in this match. So she pulled that out, and she pulled out a kendo stick that glowed up. So, so Naomi ended up hitting Nia Jax uh, with the kendo stick a few times. But Nia Jax ended up quickly backing Naomi into the corner. Naomi connected with a scissor kick to Nia Jax and she posed. Naomi ended up hitting the ropes and she had pinned a split leg, uh, leg drop onto Nia Jax. So Bailey and Naomi end up double teaming on Nia Jax with a double team attack. Nia Jax grabbed the kendo stick. And she laid the candlestick into both Bailey and Naomi. Nia Jax then grabbed the toilet seat. And she placed the toilet seat around Naomi's head. Bailey ended up quickly attacking Nia Jax with the candlestick. And Naomi ended up hitting Nia Jax with the toilet seat. To which Nia Jax was knocked into the middle turnbuckle. Naomi then put the toilet seat around Nia Jax's head. And she did the stink face. Like Rikishi. So Bailey and Naomi end up pulling Nia Jax up. Nia Jax end up attacking both of them. 
So Naomi and Bailey end up taking out Nia Jax with a double team back body drop, which was crazy. So Candice Ray was the next to enter the match because Tiffany Stratton wanted to come in, but Candice Ray ended up coming in there. This is Candice Ray's third War Games match. So Candice Ray ended up retrieving some steel chairs uh, under the ring, and she threw them uh, in there. She threw them into the ring. So Bailey and Naomi were both out of position, and they end up nearly taking chair shots to the head. Nia Jax and Candice Ray teamed up to take uh, both Bailey and Naomi out. Candice Ray jumped off of a chair and hit Naomi with a senton splash while she delivered a code breaker to Bailey. So Candice Ray ended up going to the second ring and she had sent up two chairs seat to seat. So Candice then ended up laying another chair on top. Naomi quickly bounced Candice Ray's face off of the chairs. Naomi and Bailey end up going for a 3D through the uh, bridge, through the bridges of the chairs, but Nia Jax ended up breaking that up. Nia Jax laid Bailey on all three of the chairs, and Candice Ray ended up hitting a quibrata on Bailey, which was crazy. So at this point, Bianca Belair was the next to enter War Games. Bianca ended up going under the ring, and she threw a garbage can into the ring. She retrieved the garbage can from under there, and she slammed the door in Candice Ray's face. Bianca Belair retrieved a fire extinguisher that was under the ring, and she put it in there, and she grabbed the table, which the crowd finally woke up from their coma uh, because uh, the table was out, because the crowd loves their tables. So, and then, you know, after that huge pop, they all went back into a coma. So, Cancer Ray attacked Bianca Belair as Bianca got into the ring. Bianca countered a Poison Rana from Cancer Ray, and she uh, delivered a inverted Alabama slam into the top turnbuckle to Candice. Bianca backflipped over Nia Jax with a chair, and she threw the chair at Nia Jax before drop kicking uh, Nia Jax into the chair. So Bianca and Naomi double teamed Nia Jax with the 10 punches in the corner. So Nia Jax was down in the corner because of those 10 punches. Bailey, Bailey and Cancer Ray were in the second ring. Bailey ended up hitting Cancer Ray with a back suplex. And Naomi ended up drop kicking a chair into Nia Jax's face. So Tiffany Stratton was the next to enter War Games, her very first War Games match. Stratton ended up putting a trash can and the lid of the trash can in the ring. Bianca backflipped over Tiffany Stratton, but Stratton ended up hitting Bianca in the head with the trash can lid. Stratton then ended up hitting Naomi with the trash can lid. Stratton then ended up hitting a handspring back elbow on Bianca. She then catapulted Bailey into an avalanche from Nia Jax. So we had Stratton end up delivering a backslide pin to Naomi, and Nia Jax followed up with a leg drop to Naomi. So we had Bailey end up snapping Tiffany Stratton off the ropes, to which Bailey was shown clutching at her knee because it might be maybe a legit injury uh, from Bailey. We don't know, but that didn't look too good for Bailey there. So EO Sky was next to enter War Games, and EO Sky has been in a lot of War Games matches, so she knows how it goes. So she was running around the ring. She was looking for some weapons. She pulled out a trash can that was painted that matched her wardrobe. So EO ended up harnessing the can around her shoulder and she started to climb the cage. She started to climb the War Games cage. Cancer Ray climbed up and Candace meeted EO Sky at the top of the cage. 
EO ended up fighting Candace off. EO saturated the trash can on top of the cage. Candace ended up hooking EO Sky's head. She ended up going to superplex her off the top of the cage, but EO ended up sliding down for a sunset flip power bomb. So Candace Array didn't let go of the cage. So EO ended up pulling Candace down and she ended up pinning a missile drop kick. Tiffany Stratton tried to attack EO, but EO ended up fighting her off. We had uh, EO end up pinning Stratton with a chair, and she had pinned Candace as well. EO ended up pinning Candace Ray and Tiffany Stratton with the bullet train. Jax then ended up pouncing EO down. So Bailey went and attacked Nia Jax with the kendo stick. And then Raquel Rodriguez came into the match. This was her third War Games match. Raquel Rodriguez retrie retrieved a table from under the ring. She then searched for another weapon, and then she got into the ring. Raquel then grabbed EO and ended up pinning a fallaway slam into the cage, uh, into the wall of the cage. Raquel then attacked Naomi, and she ended up going for a slam on Bianca, but Bianca ended up sliding off. So then we had Rhea Ripley. She was the next to enter uh, War Games, and she had a protective face mask, of course, that was sculpted uh, like a ram, which I thought the mask looked cool on Rhea. So Rhea ended up sliding a table into the ring, and she slammed the table off of Raquel Rodriguez's face. Rhea Ripley ended up drop kicking Nia Jax back. Raquel then attacked Rhea Ripley, and Stratton ended up hitting Rhea Ripley with the garbage can lid. Bailey ended up running in, ended up attacking Stratton. So Naomi then came off the top rope with a double rear view to Nia Jax and Raquel Rodriguez. Bianca ended up hitting Cancer Ray with a braid. Raquel then big booed a chair into Bianca's face. Naomi then ended up hitting Raquel with a bulldog. So then Liv Morgan looked a little worried because, you know, all her teammates were down. So Liv Morgan was the last to enter War Games. And she was terrified because Rhea Ripley was the only one standing. Rhea Ripley motioned for Liv Morgan to get into the ring. But Liv Morgan headed to the back like she didn't want to get into the match. But then Liv Morgan returned, and she had a baseball bat in hand. Liv Morgan entered the ring, and the War Games match officially began. So Rhea Ripley told Liv Morgan to hit her in the face with the baseball bat. Bianca then ended up driving Raquel Rodriguez into the turnbuckles between the rings. And all we saw was Rhea Ripley took off her mask. And she challenged Liv Morgan. Rhea Ripley ended up ducking a baseball bat shot from Liv Morgan. She ended up going for the rip tie to Liv Morgan, but Nia Jax interrupted that. So Nia Jax, Tiffany Stratton, and Cancer Ray double teamed on Rhea Ripley, and she and they all held up Rhea Ripley. Liv Morgan then ended up hitting Rhea Ripley in the ribs with the baseball bat. Liv Morgan then ended up hitting Rhea Ripley in the spine with the bat a few times. So, Liv Morgan held up a pair of black handcuffs. Rhea Ripley started fighting uh, Nia Jax, Tilly Stratton, Cancer Ray off. Bailey ended up running in, and she delivered some punches to Nia Jax. EO Sky then ended up taking Nia Jax down with a springboard missile drop kick. Stratton ended up hitting EO with a double stomp. And... Cancer Ray ended up hitting a diving DET on Rhea Ripley. Naomi ended up hitting Raquel Rodriguez with the X Factor. Liv Morgan came off the middle rope with a co breaker to Naomi. And Bailey then ended up hitting a sunset flip bomb into the turnbuckles. Nia Jax then ended up delivering the Samoan drop to Bailey, to which she ended up going for the cover. And Bailey ended up kicking out, to which Nia Jax couldn't believe that. So. We had a one point where EO Sky ended up 
uh, spraying the fire extinguisher to everyone. And they teased a spot where we all thought that Timmy Stratton was going to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase. But that led to EO, you know, like I said, she sprayed the fire extinguisher. So we all thought that Stratton was going to cash it in. But nope. So Rhea Ripley then handcuffed Raquel Rodriguez to the top rope. Stratton ended up dragging the table into the second ring. She set it up. Nia Jax set up another table in the first ring. Cass Ray ended up putting Bianca Belair on the top rope and started attacking her. Bianca then cut Cass Ray off and she ended up driving her into the top turnbuckle. Nia Jax then ended up crushing Bianca Belair with a Samoan drop and then she followed up with a leg drop to which Nia Jax ended up going for the cover and both EO and Bailey broke up the pin. So we had Nia Jax end up clubbing away at Bianca and she had put in Bianca on the table. Nia ended up climbing up to the second rope. She was signaling to hit the Annihilator, which Bianca ended up cutting her off. So Naomi and Bianca Belair ended up hitting Nia Jax with a double team powerbomb through the table. So Naomi ended up going for the cover, and Liv Morgan broke up the pin with a baseball bat shot. So at the end of the match, we had uh, Liv Morgan end up kicking away at Rhea Ripley. She ended up going for the Oblivion off the top rope through the table to Rhea Ripley, but Rhea Ripley ended up blocking it. Rhea Ripley then ended up hitting Liv Morgan with a Riptide off the top rope through the table. So Rhea ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Bianca Belair, Naomi, EO Sky, Bailey, and Rhea Ripley end up winning the Women's War Games match. So Rhea Ripley ended up pinning the champion in Liv Morgan. But post-match, we had a good shot of Bianca Belair, Naomi, EO Sky, Bailey, and Rhea Ripley all up on top of the cage, of the War Games cage. Nice shot it was of them. But overall, awful, awful, terrible match this was for the Women's War Games. One of the worst War Games matches I have seen, to me. And there was a lot of botches in this match. And then we had Shinsuke Nakamura versus LA Knight. This was for the United States Championship. Shinsuke Nakamura ended up making his return uh, two weeks ago on SmackDown and attacked LA Knight. And, you know, of course, last night, LA Knight uh, tried to attack Nakamura, but Nakamura ended up spraying mist on uh, Knight. But Nakamura, he had a good entrance uh, tonight, which I really liked. I thought the entrance was, you know, very good. And it just blends with Nakamura. And then Ellie Knight came out, which finally woke up the crowd. And the match itself, it was a decent match. Match got on the way with Ellie Knight uh, looking at Nakamura. Nakamura ended up seeing the kick uh, tonight, to which Knight ended up backing up. Both guys end up circling the ring. They finally end up locking up. Nakamura put Knight in the corner, and Nakamura delivered a throw thrust to Knight. Nakamura ended up kneeing Knight in his midsection. He then ended up hitting a snapmare, and he ended up kneeing Knight in the back. Nakamura ended up attacking Knight in the corner, and he then whipped Knight into the opposite corner. But Knight came out of the corner and he exploded out with a clothesline to Nakamura. Knight ended up mounting Nakamura and started punching away at him. He then dropped an elbow to Knight, uh, to Nakamura, I'm sorry. And he ended up going for the cover to which Nakamura ended up kicking out. Knight started stomping away at Nakamura in the corner. Nakamura then rolled out of the ring to recover. Knight then delivered a baseball slide, and he bounced Nakamura's face off the barricade. So Nakamura ended up fighting back at night, 
and Knockmore sent Knight into the barricade. Knockmore then bounced Knight off the barricade again, and Knight started to fight back. He bounced Knockmore's face off the apron a few times. Knight then rolled Nakamura back into the ring. Knight ended up coming back with a big boot to Nakamura's face. Knight ended up giving Nakamura a front suplex on the top rope. Knight came off the middle rope with a flying elbow to knock uh, Nakamura down to the mat. Nakamura ended up stunning Knight with a vicious back elbow. And Nakamura then followed up with a strike. And he ended up going for the cover to which Knight ended up kicking out. So we had Nakamura end up laying Knight across the top turnbuckles. He had knee and Knight in his midsection. Nakamura then ended up attacking Knight as he got back into the ring. Knight ended up dropping Nakamura with a DT. And he ended up going for the cover to which Nakamura ended up kicking out. Knight then ended up sending Nakamura into the ropes. But he ended up lowering his head. And he ended up eating a kick from Nakamura. Knight quickly came back. With a burned hammer to Nakamura, to which he went for the cover, and Nakamura kicked out. We had uh, Knight putting Nakamura on the top rope, and he started punching him. Nakamura ended up fighting Knight off. Knight then leapt to the top rope, and he ended up coming up a little short on Nakamura, to which Nakamura slid through uh, Knight's legs, and he ended up attacking uh, Knight. Nakamura then ended up kicking Knight in the back of his head, and Knight looked all dazed from that kick on the top rope. Nakamura then ended up hitting a inverted German superplex off the top rope to Knight. So Nakamura ended up going for the cover, and Knight ended up kicking out. At the end of the match, we had Nakamura end up hitting a reverse DDT on the steel platform that was between the two rings to Knight, and Knight was... Uh, with him in pain. So Nakamura finally sized uh, Knight up. And Nakamura delivered the Kinshasa to the back of Knight's head. Nakamura ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Shinsuke Nakamura ended up winning the match. And he is your new United States champion. To which I like the fact that Nakamura won. He needed this win. But did he need to win the title? Because... This view was just built quickly. No. I think Nakamura did not need to win the United States Championship tonight. I think that WWE could have, you know, gave this uh, feud a little bit more, you know, build. And then what I would have done is have Nakamura win tonight. And then we get another match between Nakamura and Knight at Saturday night's main event. And then have Nakamura win the title at Saturday night's main event. That's how the way I would have booked it. But Nakamura just came back and he's already the United States champion. I think that is just, you know, lazy creative there. Oh, let's just give Nakamura the title there and let's call it a night. You know, he just came back. Here, Nakamura, we're giving you the United States championship. Here. That's what this felt like. But overall, it was a decent match. But like I said, Nakamura needed the win. Did he need to win the United States Championship tonight? No. I think they could have just saved that for Saturday night's main event. And then we had the Alpha Academy. We had Maxime Dupree, Akira Tozawa. They were outside. This was a commercial that they were doing for True Classic which was one of the main sponsors for the show tonight. And it was very cringe. It was very corny. You had Otis come out, and he was naked. They blurted out. I'm like, really? This is a, this is a commercial advertising for True Classic? I'm like, man, what an awful cringe commercial it was. God. And then we had Sheamus versus Ludwig Kaiser versus Braun Breaker. Drill threat match for the Intercontinental Championship. This, in my opinion, was the first, match, the first best match of the night. And the crowd woke up for this match. They were so into this match 
as you know it progressed. So they were entertained finally. But Sheamus, you know, he wants to try to win the Intercontinental Championship because it's the only title that he hasn't won in his WWE career. But the match ended up getting on the way. We had Sheamus and Braun Breaker eyeing up on Ludwig Kaiser because Kaiser ended up attacking both Breaker and Sheamus on Monday Night Raw two weeks ago. So Kaiser got out of the ring to save himself. Braun Breaker ended up powering Sheamus into the corner, and he ends he ended up hitting some shoulder thrust to uh, Sheamus's midsection. Sheamus fought Breaker off. Breaker ended up reversing the whip, but he ended up lowering his head, and he ate a kick from Sheamus. Braun Breaker then started firing back with a exploder on Sheamus. Kaiser then ended up running in with a steel chair in hand. So Breaker ended up knocking the chair away from Kaiser. Breaker then ran over Kaiser with a quick clothesline. Which, you know, Breaker is a beast. You know, you gotta love uh, how Breaker works uh, in the ring. So we have Breaker end up pounding Sheamus to the corner. Sheamus ended up fighting back with an Irish curse back. Breaker to uh, Braun Breaker. Sheamus then hit a second Irish curse to Breaker, and he went for the power bomb. And we had Kaiser end up breaking that up. Kaiser ended up hitting Braun Breaker upside down, and he drop kicked Breaker. Kaiser then went to the outside, and he grabbed a steel chair. Kaiser then wedged the chair in the corner, and he turned to see Sheamus and Braun Breaker there. Sheamus and Braun Breaker were teeing off on Kaiser with some punches. They ended up sending Kaiser into the opposite corner. Sheamus then hit a clothesline to uh, Kaiser. So, Breaker then show tackled Kaiser. Sheamus put Kaiser on the apron, but Breaker ended up attacking Sheamus from behind. Breaker ended up going outside the ring, and he set up for a run attack. But Kaiser cut Breaker off with a baseball slide. Kaiser then ended up charging at Sheamus, and he drop kicked Sheamus into the ring steps. Kaiser then ended up bouncing Sheamus off the commentary table. Breaker then came out of nowhere. He ended up delivering a diving attack on Sheamus, which was crazy. Breaker then ended up hitting Kaiser with an explosive suplex on the floor. So Sheamus and Breaker got into a brawl. Breaker ended up shouting, you think you can beat me up to Sheamus? Breaker then ended up putting Sheamus into the ring, and he attacked Sheamus in the corner. Sheamus started to fight back. Breaker then ended up kneeing Sheamus in his midsection. Breaker then ended up sending Sheamus into the ropes, and he turned Sheamus inside out with a kitchen sink knee to his midsection. So Breaker then ended up going for the cover on Sheamus, but he ended up sliding off, and he did some push-ups, just like... Of course, his uncle, Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. We all know how Scott Steiner used to do those uh, push-ups, you know, to show off. So Breaker started taunting Sheamus. Sheamus ended up catching Breaker with a power slam. Sheamus ended up going for the cover, and Kaiser broke up the pin. Kaiser and Sheamus started brawling and spilled out of the ring. Sheamus ended up going for a power bomb on the commentary table to Kaiser, but Kaiser ended up fighting out of that. Breaker then ended up diving off the apron. He ended up sending both uh, Kaiser and Sheamus over the commentary table with a clothesline, which was crazy. So Breaker ended up sending Sheamus over the barricade into the crowd. Breaker then grabbed Kaiser and he gorilla pressed Kaiser, but Kaiser then raped Breaker's eyes. Kaiser then ended up sending Breaker into the ring steps. Kaiser then started relaxing against the barricade. And all we saw was Sheamus. Sheamus emerged behind Kaiser. Sheamus then ended up delivering the 10 beats of the Bodderin to Kaiser. He ended up hitting a 11th uh, beat of the Bodderin to Kaiser. Breaker tried to attack Sheamus, but Sheamus caught Breaker and delivered the 10 beats of the Bodderin on him. 
Sheamus then dove off the top of the barricade with a double clothesline to Breaker and Kaiser. Sheamus then ended up getting Kaiser in the ring. Kaiser scurried out of the ring, and he grabbed the shillelagh. Sheamus followed Kaiser out, and he grabbed the shillelagh before clotheslining Kaiser over the barricade into the timekeeper's area. So Sheamus threw the shillelagh aside. He got into the ring because Breaker was shouting to Sheamus, Come on, old man. So Breaker ended up kneeing uh, Sheamus in his face. Breaker th then climbed the ropes. But Sheamus ended up crotching Breaker. Sheamus hit Breaker with the Celtic Cross. He ended up going for the cover, to which Breaker ended up kicking out. So Breaker quickly scaled the ropes. He ended up hitting the Frankensteiner to Sheamus. So Breaker ended up charging for a spear. Sheamus sidestepped Breaker. And Breaker ended up hitting the chair that was wedged in the corner. Sheamus then connected with the bro kick, and he went for the cover, to which Kaiser pulled the ref out of the ring. So Kaiser smiled at Sheamus, which that infuriated Sheamus, because Sheamus thought the, that the match was over. So Sheamus ended up going outside. Kaiser viciously attacked Sheamus with the shillelagh. So Kaiser hitched Sheamus with the shillelagh, and Sheamus was covered uh, with welts on his back from the shillelagh. Sheamus then stunned Kaiser with the kneecapper. He ended up going for the cover, but Kaiser ended up kicking out. So Kaiser ended up catching Sheamus with a rolling death valley driver. Kaiser then grabbed him, but Sheamus then ended up lifting Kaiser. Kaiser started punching Sheamus in his ribs, and he ended up delivering a DDT. Braun Breaker then ended up delivering a spear to Kaiser, knocking him out of the ring. Breaker then ended up sizing Sheamus up, and Breaker delivered the spear to Sheamus. Breaker ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Braun Breaker ended up winning the match, retaining the Intercontinental Championship. Overall, very good match this was, very entertaining. This was the first best match of the night, in my opinion. The crowd was so into it. A lot of good spots here, especially Braun Breaker being absolutely uh, great and entertaining here. You know, the fans love Braun Breaker because of, you know, how they bark. You know, they do the bark at Braun Breaker. You know, that's how over Braun Breaker is. And he deserves to be that over. And then we had Damian Priest versus Gunther. This was for the World Heavyweight Championship, and this was an okay match. This was a rematch from SummerSlam. You remember at SummerSlam, Gunther defeated uh, Damian Priest to win the World Heavyweight Championship. So Damian Priest getting another shot at Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship here. So the match got on the way. Both Gunther and, and uh, Damian Priest end up locking up. Gunther ended up hitting a headlock takeover on Priest. Priest ended up grounding Gunther with an arm drag into an arm bar. Gunther ended up fighting up. He tried to pull him off, but Priest ended up holding on to that arm bar. Gunther ended up going for a right hand, but Priest ended up avoiding that. Gunther then ended up getting out of the ring to avoid a kick from Priest. Gunther then took a few minutes to recover. He then got back into the ring. Gunther put himself through the ropes to uh, keep Priest back. Gunther ended up quickly uh, kicking and clubbing away at Priest, which knocked Priest into the corner. Gunther ended up sending Priest into the opposite corner. Priest popped out of that corner with a run show attack on Gunther. Priest was shown holding his shoulder in pain. Gunther then rolled out of the ring to recover as he ended up watching Priest you know, holding his shoulder, holding his injured shoulder. So Gunther got into the ring. Priest delivered some kicks to Gunther. Gunther ended up going for a desperation chop, which Priest avoided that. He ended up boxing Gunther's ears. Gunther ended up booting Priest back. He charged at Priest, but Priest ended up hitting the flapjack to Gunther. Priest once again held his shoulder in pain. So, Gunther ended up kicking Priest hard in his shoulder. Priest ended up rolling out of the ring, and he held his shoulder in pain. So, Gunther was focusing 
on that injured shoulder of Priest. Gunther ended up sending uh, Priest's shoulder into the ring post, and he knocked Priest into the barricade. Gunther continued to attack Priest's arm, and he ended up clubbing that shoulder. Priest rolled into the ring, and Gunther ended up snapping Priest's arm. So Gunther continued to target that injured arm of Priest. He snapped that arm and twisted it. Gunther then ended up pinning a short arm shoulder tackle to Priest. He ended up dropping a knee on Priest's shoulder. Gunther then pulled Priest up and he brutalized Priest with a chop, a very vicious chop to Priest. So Gunther applied a modified surfboard stretch on Priest, to which Priest was shown screaming in pain. Priest ended up managing to fight up and he forearmed Gunther in his face a few times. Gunther cut Priest off with a chop, but Priest ended up stunning him with a forearm to his jaw. Gunther then ended up wrenching uh, Priest's arm, and he appeared in a shoulder thrust. Gunther then chopped Priest. Priest ended up attacking Gunther before they ended up wiping each other out with a chop snap attack, a chop snap kick attack to the both of them. Priest then ended up slapping uh, the canvas, and he got fired up. Priest then forearmed Gunther in the face, but Gunther ended up snapping Priest's arm. Priest responded with some chops to uh, Gunther's chest, and he delivered a right hand to Gunther's face. Priest then ended up hitting a run elbow in the corner to Gunther, and he followed that up with a flatliner. Priest ended up going for the cover, and Gunther kicked out. Yeah, Priest ended up going for a clothesline, but it got uh, ducked by Gunther. So, Gunther ended up trying to go for a sleeper hold, but Priest ended up getting out of that, so Gunther ended up attempting to hit a power bomb to Priest. Priest got out of that, he ended up going for the razor's edge, but his arm, of course, was too injured to hit that razor's edge on Gunther. Priest once again tried to go for the razor's edge, but once again, his arm ended up giving out. Gunther then applied once again the sleeper hold. And he transitioned that into a power bomb to Priest. So Gunther ended up going for the cover, and Priest ended up kicking out. Gunther ended up getting up, and he headed to the top rope. Priest quickly cut Gunther off, and he started striking away at him. Priest then ended up pinning a top rope Hercarana to Gunther, and Priest followed that up with the Razor's Edge. He finally hit the Razor's Edge on Gunther. He ended up going for the cover, but Gunther ended up kicking out. And that cover looked really weak because of Priest's left arm being injured. Priest then pulled his straps down as he signaled for the end. Priest ended up going for the south of heaven, but Gunther landed on his feet and he chopped at Priest. So Priest ended up chopping back at uh, Gunther. He ended up going for the south of heaven, but Gunther got out again. Gunther then applied the Kimura lock to Priest's injured arm. Priest managed to grab the bottom rope to break up the Kimura lock. Gunther ended up getting to his feet and he shouted at the crowd. Gunther then pulled Priest up and he had pinned a short arm clothesline. Gunther then started taunting the crowd again and he hit another short arm clothesline to Priest. Gunther ended up going for a third short arm clothesline to Priest but it got ducked by Priest. And Priest ended up hitting a lariat to Gunther. Priest then hit the ropes and he delivered a clothesline to Gunther to which he ended up going for the cover. And Gunther ended up kicking out. So at the end of the match, Gunther ended up going for a top rope superplex. But Priest ended up fighting Gunther off and he fell to the floor. Priest was on the outside. So we had the ref. End up getting the ring to check on Gunther, to which the ref checked on Priest. And while the ref was checking in on Gunther, Finn Balor appeared at ringside. Finn Balor jumped off the steel steps and he delivered a coup de grace on Priest, to which Gunther was irate. Gunther then delivered a big boot to Balor, knocking Balor down. Gunther ended up getting Priest in the ring and he applied a sleeper hold again on Priest. So Priest was unconscious 
and the ref ended up calling for the bell. So there you go. Gunther ended up winning the match, retaining the World Heavyweight Championship. So post-match, Gunther ended up clutching uh, the World Heavyweight Championship, and he looked a little unhappy that Finn Balor interfered in the match. You know, Gunther wanted to defeat Priest on his own without any help. So that's going to come into play there. But two things here. Are we signaling back to seeing Finn Balor and Damian Priest go at it once again? Which I hope that's not the case. Second thing here. Are we going to see a true threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship where it's going to be Gunther versus Damian Priest versus Finn Balor? I go with that. And... I hope uh, we get that match at Saturday night's main event. So hopefully we get that. But overall, this was a uh, okay match between Gunther and Damian Priest here. With Gunther coming out victorious, retaining the title. So then uh, they went over what we're going to see on Saturday night's main event, which is coming up on... Uh, the 14th, which on Saturday night's main event from Long Island at Nassau Coliseum, we're going to see the first ever Women's United States Champion will be crowned, which my pick, Chelsea Green. I think Chelsea Green is going to be the first ever Women's United States Champion. So that's my prediction. And also Cody Rhodes will defend the Undisputed WWE Championship against Kevin Owens, which that should be a good match there. So that's all taking place at Saturday night's main event on December 14th from Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. Which I wish I was going to the show. And then of course, this Monday on Raw, the New Day will be celebrating their 10th anniversary, which we are going to see the heel turn of Xavier Woods take place. And we're also going to see the Women's Intercontinental Championship Tournament begin. So that's all set for My Night Raw on Monday. Main event. The Men's War Games match. The Bloodline. Sol Sokoa. Jacob Fatu. Tama Tonga. And Tonga Loa. And also Bronson Reed. They have taken on Sami Zayn. The Usos. Jimmy and Jay. CM Punk. And Roman Reigns. And this was the last best match of the night in my opinion. The crowd was more into this match. This War Games match than the Women's War Games match. Ain't that a coincidence? So Tama Tonga was uh, the first to uh, start off here. He climbed the cage. And he scrawled around the Walls of the War Games cage like a spider monkey. And Jey Uso was the other guy to get in there. So it was Tama Tonga and Jey Uso in there. So the bell ended up ringing. The match didn't start, of course. So Tama Tonga was standing on the top rope in the second ring. Jey Uso ended up leaving the first ring. And got into the second ring. Tamatanga got off the top rope. Jay and Tamatanga end up taking a lot of time before they end up going at it. Tamatanga end up sending Jay into the corner. Jay end up slingshotting over Tamatanga and he delivered an uppercut. Jay end up charging with a running back elbow to Tamatanga, which he followed up with a snap kick. Tamatanga end up blocking a kick from Jay. And he ducked the Insiguri. Tamatanga then connected with a sliding clothesline to Jay. Tamatanga started clubbing away at Jay and he delivered a Falcon Arrow. He then mounted Jay and started punching away at him. Tonga ended up going between uh, the two rings and he had pinned a slingshot elbow drop to Jay. Jay started firing back with some right hands. Tamatanga then reversed the whip into the corner and Jay ended up hitting hard into the corner. So Tama Tonga ended up taking Jay down and he ended up going for the cover to which 
Why did Tamatanga go for the cover? The match did not start yet. It starts when all the competitors are in the ring. So that was a botch there by Tamatanga. Jay then avoided a sliding clothesline, and he had a pin at Insiguri to Tamatanga. So the next two enter the match was Bronson Reed. So Bronson Reed ended up retrieving four chairs from under the ring. He threw those four chairs into the ring. Jay threw a few chairs into Bronson Reed's face, to which Bronson Reed blocked one of the chairs. Jay ended up punching that Bronson Reed, ended up charging, but Reed ended up taking Jay down with an avalanche. Reed then ended up driving a chair into Jay's ribs. Reed uh, ended up driving the chair into Jay's ribs again. And Reed ended up smashing Jay's spine with the chair. And he slammed Tamatanga onto Jay. Reed then ended up hitting a senton splash onto Jay. To which Jay rolled into the second ring. Reed and Tamatanga ended up following Jay into the second ring. Tonga then started stomping away at Jay. And Bronson Reed ended up standing on, on uh, Jay's midsection. Reed ended up whipping Tamatanga into Jay. And then Reed ended up hitting an avalanche of his own onto Jay. So at this point, Jimmy Uso ended up entering the match. Jimmy Uso ended up running down to, of course, help his brother. So Jimmy got into the ring. He ended up kicking Tamatanga and Bronson Reed back. Jimmy then ended up chopping uh, Bronson Reed a few times, and the Usos end up uh, double kick, double uh, kicking uh, Bronson Reed. So the Usos end up hitting a double team uppercut to Reed. Tamatanga end up hitting a back elbow on Jay. Jimmy then ended up booting Reed back, and he uppercutted Tamatanga. We had Jimmy end up taking uh, Bronson Reed and Tamatanga out with a corkscrew moonsault. The Usos then knocked Reed into the corner. The Usos then ended up doing uh, 10 punches to both Reed and Tamatanga. And they knocked Bronson Reed back with a double team uppercut. To which the crowd started chanting, this is Usi. So at this point, Jacob Fatu entered the match. To which Tangaloa was going to go in. But Sosakoa held Tangaloa back. So Jacob Fatu ended up getting to the ring. He took Jimmy down and he started stomping away on him. Jay ended up hitting uh, Fatu with a Samoan drop, but Fatu immediately popped up. I was like, holy shit. You know, he ended up hitting that Samoan drop and he immediately popped up. I'm like, Jacob Fatu is the Terminator. <laughs> so Fatu ended up taking Jay down and he avalanched Jimmy into the wall of the cage. Fatu ended up taking Jay down, and he slinged Jimmy's head into the wall of the cage. Jacob Fatu then ended up in the ropes, and he pinned Jimmy with a handspring kick. He then ended up pinning Jay with a standard mood salt. So Bronson Reed and Tamatanga ended up joining Jacob Fatu in the first ring. Bronson Reed and Jacob Fatu held Jay up by his arms. Tamatanga ended up spinning uh, him around for a triple team slam. To which Jacob Fatu then ended up hitting Jimmy with a run hip attack into the cage. So at this point, CM Punk was originally going to get into the match. But Roman Reigns blocked Punk with his arm. And that led to Sami Zayn entering the match. So because Reigns did that to Punk, Punk did not look too happy with Reigns. So Sami got into the ring. Sammy started punching away at Tamatanga. He up springboarding over Tamatanga and delivered a clothesline. He then went to attack Bronson Reed, but Bronson Reed knocked Sammy back. Sammy then sidestepped an avalanche and he did the 10 punches to Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed ended up falling to the canvas and he rolled between the rings. Sammy Zane ended up standing on Bronson Reed and started stomping away at him. Sammy Zane ended up going for a cross body block. On Jacob Fatu, but Sami Zayn got caught by Jacob Fatu. Jimmy then ended up hitting Jacob Fatu with a super kick and he ended up going down. 
Jimmy and Sami Zayn end up doing their handshake. They embraced, you know, each other. Jimmy and Sami Zayn then double team Jacob Fatu with some stomps. And then we had Tongaloa entering the match. Tongaloa ended up putting two tables in the ring. Jacob Fatu slid uh, one of the tables into the second ring. Tongaloa then clotheslined Jay down. Tongaloa ended up going into the first ring, and he was focusing on Sami Zayn. So the table was leading in the corner of the second ring. Tongaloa then dropped Sami Zayn on the top turnbuckle, and he splashed Sami Zayn against the cage. So Jacob Fatu ended up hitting Jay with a split like a moonsault, and Tama Tonga ended up putting a chair in Jimmy's face, and he had pinned a slide and drop kick. To which Tongaloa ended up sending Jay's face into the cage wall. So at this point, Roman Reigns was going to enter the match. But CM Punk ended up blowing by Roman Reigns. And Reigns was not happy about that. And of course, CM Punk then entered the match. This is Punk's first War Games match. So Punk stood on the steps, and he looked at the bloodline. Punk ended up going to ringside, and he retrieved a toolbox out from under the ring. Punk got into the ring, and he started hitting everyone in the head with the toolbox. Punk then wily ended up hitting away at Tong Loa. Punk then ended up hitting Reed with a run high knee into the corner. Punk then ended up hitting Tama Tonga with a run high knee. And then he followed up uh, by Jacob Fatu. Punk then ended up pinning Jacob Fatu with a running bulldog on the toolbox. And Jacob Fatu immediately popped up. So once again, the Terminator, Jacob Fatu, popped up. And we couldn't believe that. So Jacob Fatu ended up attacking Punk. And he had pinned a pop-up Samoan drop onto uh, Punk. So at this point, Sol Sokoa ended up entering the match. Before he got into the ring, Sol Sokoa was talking trash to Roman Reigns. Sol Sokoa headed to the ring, and he slammed the door into Sami Zayn's head. So we had Jimmy was set up uh, near the door, and Sol Sokoa ended up slamming the door on Jimmy. Sokoa then grabbed a steel chain, and he got into the ring. Sol Sokoa ended up hitting Sami Zayn with the spin solo. So both uh, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa ended up hitting Jimmy with a spin slam. And we had Sol Sokoa end up chaining the door shut. You know, preventing Roman Reigns from not coming into the match. So Roman Reigns finally made his way out of the cage, of the shark cage. The bloodline was awaiting in the ring for Roman. So Roman couldn't get into the ring because, of course, Sol Sokoa ended up uh, chained the door shut. So Roman Reigns was like, oh, how am I going to get into the ring? Uh, Roman, climb the cage. So Roman then climbed the wall of the cage. Tamatanga ended up Greeting him quickly on the top of the cage, but Reigns ended up punching Tama Tonga away. Tongaloa did the same thing. He got up there quick to meet Roman, and Tongaloa met the same fate from Roman. Bronson Reed climbed the cage, but Roman ended up knocking Reed down, and he crushed Reed on the top rope. Reigns started kicking everyone away, and he attacked Sol Sokoa. He knocked Sol Sokoa off the top rope. Reigns then ended up hitting the bloodline with a diamond cross body block. And the match officially began. So Sokoa ended up sending Reigns over the ropes. Reigns ended up uppercutting Sokoa back. Reigns got into the first ring and he helped everyone to their feet. Except for CM Punk. So Reigns and Punk were arguing. Pullman then came down to ringside. And he shouted at both Reigns and Punk. Playman 
was shouting that both Punk and Reigns need to bring the best out of each other because this is war games. So, of course, the ring announcer ended up saying that war games is beginning. So the original bloodline ended up standing in one ring while the new bloodline ended up standing in the other. And a huge brawl ended up breaking out. Sami Zayn ended up DDT and Bronson Reed. Tongaloa ended up attacking Sami Zayn. And Tamatanga and Tongaloa ended up double teaming on Sami. The Usos ended up hitting them with some stereo super kicks. We had Jacob Fatu and Sol Sokoa end up attacking the Usos. Sokoa then ended up sending Jay head first into the cage wall. Jacob Fatu and Sol Sokoa got into the into the second ring, and Reigns and Punk started punching away at them. We had Sol Sokoa end up going for a Samoan spike to Punk, but Reigns ended up getting the way. Sol Sokoa ended up sidestepping Reigns, and Reigns ended up spearing Punk, and we were like, "Oh no!" So Punk was prepping to hit Jacob Fatu with the go to sleep. So, Sol Sokoa ended up hitting Reigns with the Samoan Spike. He ended up going for the cover, and Reigns ended up kicking out. We had Jacob Fatu end up going for a Moonsault to uh, Punk, but he ended up missing it because Jacob Fatu ended up hurting his knee. Reed ended up pinning Punk with a Senton Splash. He ended up going for the cover, to which Sami Zayn broke up the pin. So Jacob Fatu was holding his knee in pain. And he was wedged in the corner to stay away from what was going on. Bronson Reed and Sol Sokoa set up the table. Fatu got up. He was hobbling. Reigns then low blow Jacob Fatu. And he appeared in Sol Sokoa with a spear. Reed then quickly super kicked Reigns and put him on the table. Reed then climbed up to the top rope. But he headed to the top of the cage. So Reed looked down at Reigns, who was laid out on the table. Bronson Reed dove off the top of the cage, and Punk pulled Reigns away, and Bronson Reed crashed through the table. That table was broken quickly, which that was unreal. That was a good spot there by Bronson Reed diving off the cage and going through the table. We had the Usos. End up taking uh, Jacob Fatu out with the 1D. Tangaloa ran in. Jay ended up hitting uh, Tangaloa with a spear. Tamatanga ended up attacking Jay. But Sami Zayn ended up taking Tamatanga out with the Blue Thunder Bomb. So Jacob Fatu was on the table. Jimmy headed to the top of the cage. He then ended up diving off the cage. And he ended up crushing Jacob Fatu with the Uso Splash through the table. So we had Jimmy end up going for the cover, and there you go. Roman Reigns, The Usos, CM Punk, and Sami Zayn end up winning the men's War Games match. Overall, this was the last best match of the night, in my opinion, and this was a hell of a lot better than the women's War Games match. The crowd was so into uh, this uh, men's War Games match. There was a lot of good spots here, you know, mainly with Bronson Reed jumping off of the cage and going through the table. And you had, you know, Jimmy Uso, you know, doing the Uso splash to Jacob Fatu through the table. Just good stuff uh, in this match. And of course, post match, you had, you know, the OG Bloodline, Roman Reigns, the Usos, Sami Zayn, and CM Punk. They end up making their way, uh, you know, through. Uh, they end up making their way up the ramp, and they were playing it up that something else was going to happen. A lot of people were like, "Oh, maybe The Rock is going to uh, come out and make an appearance." Nope, we didn't get that. But overall, Survivor Series War Games this year, it was a decent show. You know, take out the women's war games match and start off. And if you start off with Nakamura and Knight, this would have been a good show from top to bottom. But 
still, the show was decent. But anyway, that's it for my review of Survivor Series War Games. Thank you all for watching, and I uh, hope you all enjoyed this review. And uh, just as of uh, now, uh, I got news from uh, my buddy the Tilla, aka Rangers of Wrestling. Uh, apparently, on the post show, Priest ended up attacking Balor, and the Judgment Day ended up attacking Priest. So, not surprised about that. Same old. Same old. But, yeah, that's what happened on the post show. Uh, thanks to uh, my buddy, the Tilla, Rangers of Wrestling. But, thank you all for watching, and be sure to give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.